2020 was certainly an interesting year for markets. What do you think 2021 has in store? 2020 was an interesting year and, and, and I for one am glad it is behind us and I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm not alone there. Um, as we look into 2021, I think the key message we, we give investors is that at least mathematically, markets still add up here. Um, and so while performance was strong last year, interest rates are still very, very low. And so how we try to represent this is usually when we look at something, the, the equity risk premium. And so when we talk about the equity risk premium, what we're saying is if you take the PE of the US market or the S&P 500, and let's assume it's just over 20 times, and you do one divided by the PE, then you're getting just over a 4% earnings yield for owning equities. And then if you subtract the risk-free rate, which is just over 1%, you're getting effectively a high three, or just over 3% carry for owning US equities. Uh, and if we look at that back over time, then that is, actually, that is actually a reasonably good carry for equities. And so despite the performance that markets have driven over the last year, they still don't look expensive versus bonds. Um, and so if we carry that forward, the key thing from our point of view to point out that is if either a couple of things have to change here, either earnings have to go down a lot, um, and we think that's unlikely uh, because COVID is now out of the way and we're in an economic recovery. The other thing that could change is bonds could go up a lot. And we also think that's unlikely uh, because central banks would like to keep interest rates low to help economies recover. And so from our point of view, the path of least resistance here to close this arbitrage is still for equity markets to go higher. Um, and yes, while there is areas of speculation, on the whole, they are not over expensive at the moment. And so that is our path of least resistance. The second thing we'd obviously flag to viewers is, and something that we talk about a lot here at Monroe Partners, is that the S&P 500 is not really the economy. And so while a lot of us look outside and see pain in the economy, the S&P 500 is, is, is not feeling that pain. Um, what we're showing you on this slide is if you look at the left-hand side, the top 10 stocks in the S&P are all actually net beneficiaries of the COVID crisis, being either digital businesses or dominant retailers. And on the right-hand side, what we're also showing you is even if you are affected by the COVID crisis, like a number of these companies here, the US Fed has actually lowered your cost of borrowing by effectively stepping into the corporate bond market. And so even the companies that are finding it hard can still borrow money very easily, thanks to the factions of the Fed, and ultimately take share from the smaller parts of the economy that are struggling. And so while this dynamic is probably not going to last forever, um, ultimately because it is driving inequality in the marketplace, it is something that we think that can last for a number of years still because ultimately we need these companies to do well to get people employed again. We need these companies to do well for the economic recovery. Yes, it will equal higher taxes down the road, but we do think that's a fair way off. And so from our point of view, on the whole, we remain broadly bullish equities, equity markets as we enter 2021. What are the key risks to this outlook? And what can you do to protect against these risks? So I think the one thing we did learn from 2020 is that it's very hard to predict what the risks to the outlook are. It's, it's usually the things that come along that you don't see. Uh, that cause the problems, not the things that you do see. Uh, but at least as we sit here today, we would flag a, a number of risks that we can see that, 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 that worry us as to the, the positive outlook for markets. Um, and the first and foremost is obviously COVID. Um, we know that a vaccine is out there. We know the vaccine is quite efficient. Most people are assuming that this is going to be okay 12, 24 months from now. The market is looking through this problem. Um, and were that not to be the case, then that would clearly be a risk to markets. One that we've dealt with before, so we know how to deal with, but it's definitely one out there. The second one that's clearly percolating in the background would be China. Uh, China is definitely behaving probably slightly more erratically than we would have predicted, particularly now that Biden's been elected. Uh, and it's definitely something worth monitoring from that point of view. Uh, the third risk is definitely the one that we think is probably the riskiest one out there is the risk of inflation. Uh, as a growth equity manager, interest rates are important to the valuation of our companies in terms of duration. Uh, if inflation was to come back or if the Fed was incapable of keeping interest rates low, then that is something that we need to monitor and something that we'd probably hedge against. And the last thing is something I, I mentioned before. You know, the reality is, is this, the policies of today are driving inequality further and further apart. Um, this is obviously an unfortunate outcome, but one that's needed to, to, to get the economy to recover. And there will ultimately be consequences for that down the track. The last thing I'd also point out, which we tried to show you on the slide here on the right hand side, there is actually an opportunity here for, for things to get better. Um, it is important to remind people that we have just been through, you know, probably one of the most difficult periods in my investment lifetime. Uh, and if you think of the entire Trump, Trump presidency, a very, very volatile period uh, for, for macroeconomics and news flow. 
Uh, and we are hopeful that the election of Joe Biden is a shift back to the centre in politics and hopefully can create more stability ahead. And so while there are offsetting factors to a number of these risks, that is the one they're most hopeful on. And if you look at this in terms of equity market volatility, as we're showing you here, if you take a long-term view of volatility over that time frame, and this is the VIX index for the US S&P 500, we have just been through a really, really bad period. Um, and generally, if you go back to the financial crisis, it can now be followed by a period of stability. Uh, and I think it's important for people to realise that a lot of what these issues that we're talking about, while they're, while they're very omnipresent, they are effectively priced in, or at least priced into earnings. The last and final risk is here, we're just showing you on the right, um, is obviously there is some speculative type behaviour in the market. Um, and that speculative type behaviour is right now in pockets, uh, like electric vehicles or um, or in, um, in sort of certain technology areas. And that speculative behaviour is, is around, but you don't see it in companies like Microsoft or Amazon, so from that point of view. So it's not in the whole market today. And, and look, finally, just to point out, what can we do to protect against these? As I said at the start, you know, it's not the things you see coming, it's the thing you don't see coming. Uh, and ultimately, it's our capital protection tools and our rules around how we use them that we hope to hold us in good stead. Uh, this is a good example of how they've worked in, in two previous corrections. And obviously, we're hopeful that they will work just as well in the future. There is no guarantee that that will happen, but, but, but we have them and other people don't. And, and, and we have the track record of using them. And they're there to help for those things that we don't see coming along.